What does it take to do good surgery? It takes knowledge. You need to have that information, but that's not enough. You need to have clarity about that information so you can actually ex execute and so that you can prepare. So preparation for surgery is also extremely important if you want to be good at it. And you need to have the knowledge and clarity and preparation when it comes to instruments. And in this video, I'm going to start explaining the surgical kit, starting with flap instruments. Now, many dentists have confusion about surgical instrumentation, confused about the type of instruments you should have in your, your surgical kit, how to use each instrument and in which order. And it's not always surprising. They all kind of look the same. They got the same color. There is sometimes minute difference between the instruments. Most of us have too many instruments on the kit. Maybe not the ones we need and maybe not knowing how to use each one and in which order. So to simplify things, let's look at a basic structure of a surgery. Okay, it could be a periodontal surgery, it could be a graft surgery, an extraction, but just to have a general concept. So a basic surgery would normally start with an incision and a flap. So we would have incision and flap instruments. Then once the flap is reflected, let's say a periodontal surgery, we would have some type of bone instrumentation or osseous instrumentation. Then depending on the surgery, we would do some type of grafting, could be bone grafting or soft tissue grafting. So we would have those bone grafting instruments. And at the end of the surgery, we would have the suturing process, which would require suturing instruments. And of course, we can't do surgery alone. We would have an assistant by our side and we would have assistant tools. So I identified five groups of instruments that should be in your surgical kit and should be appropriate for a basic type of surgery in general, just to keep things simple. So looking at an actual basic surgical kit, you would have flap instruments, you would have osseous instruments, bone grafting instruments, suturing instruments, and assistant instruments. Let's start with the flap instruments. Now, I identified six instruments that would help us make the incision and flap design. That's where surgeries start. Instrument number one, I call it flap one, is our periodontal probe. And with that probe, I outline the incision outline. I outline the flap that I'm planning. It gives me a visual. It creates some muscle memory. I basically pretend I'm using a 15 blade, but I'm only using a probe to make some final adjustments in my flap design or maybe rethink it just before I make the incision. As you know, incisions are irreversible. And I use my probe for that. Besides, you need to have a probe in your surgical kit to measure things, a donor site, a recipient site, a defect size to actual uh, probe, confirm a root fracture, etc. The second tool in the flap instruments is your blade holder. I use a number 15 blade to create the actual incision. I like to use a blade holder that is round, that is comfortable to hold in a pen grasp. I can easily rotate between my fingers for a more accurate, accurate incision creation. And I always recommend your assistant be extremely cautious when he or she removes the blade to prevent injuries. The third instrument is a type of knife, like the Orban knife, that is meant to define the incision. When you're making an incision with a number 15, it touches tooth structure, it touches bone, it becomes dull. Your incision may not be 100% defined or well-defined, even if the blade is new. The Orban knife will define that incision and will make flap reflection easier. I also use it for removing discarded tissue. The next instrument is the periosteal elevator uh, with which I reflect the flap, uh, mostly in full thickness. 
The flat and sharp side is aimed towards the bone, so I can have an easier reflection, while the round part is facing the tissue. And it's round to minimize trauma. The other side of the elevator is meant to hold the flap retracted, so it doesn't get damaged while I'm doing work on the bone, like osteo, uh, osseous recontouring, osteoplasty. It has a white part that keeps the flap uh, secure. You have to actually lean against the bone to hold the flap back. The second type of periosteal elevator I recommend you have in the kit is the Malt 9. It has a sharp end. Uh, it's like a, it's, it is a periosteal elevator uh, that helps you undermine uh, corners when you make vertical releasing incisions. Uh, sometimes they use it for uh, you know, uh, carrying bone into the site if, if needed to, uh, but uh, it's another type of periosteal elevator that uh, comes handy when I'm dealing with areas that are harder to reach. It doesn't have the part that uh, helps you retract the flap, but it's good to have a second periosteal elevator because sometimes your assistant will use the first one uh, to retract the flap while you're doing a, a bony procedure. The last flap instrument is called the Boozer Elevator, and this one I use for reflecting a papilla when I need to use extra caution not to damage friable tissue or I need to undermine a papilla and reflect it in partial thickness or in full thickness. Depending on the case, I use this elevator. It has two sides. One side has a curved structure. It looks almost like a little spoon, which allows me to undermine uh, behind a line angle of a tooth, for example, which is where the papilla is. And the straight part uh, that looks like an arrow with a pinpoint uh, allows me to start the reflection of a small structure. Here are the six instruments for flap reflections, our flap instruments, the periodontal probe, our blade holder. We actually have two in our kit the Orbe knife, periosteal elevator, the Malt 9, the different elevator, and the Boozer instrument. I hope I created some clarity about the types of instruments that you need to have in your surgical kit, what the purpose of each instrument is, and in which order to use it. I want this to be clear, simple, and intuitive for you. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about what instruments to use after you reflect the flap, which I call the osseous instruments that are part of your surgical kit. See you in the next one, guys.